Hey, this is John from Pinet Comics, and if my co-host Lloyd was here, he would tell you a couple things about this show. Number one, we swear way too fucking much. And number two, we drop spoilers without any warning. Now that you know that, listen in and enjoy the show. Ahoy. <laughs> I've never tried that before. It's a new way to open the show. Welcome to Pine and Comics. I'm John. I'm Gary. And we're here to talk about something near and dear to both of our hearts, a little bit more to this guy over here's heart. Gary, ahoy, wh- ahoy. what are we talking about today, Gary? The top 10 action figures before 1990. Now, we have to give credit where credit's due. Our guest tonight, John, from the Shocking Things podcast. John, what's going on, man? Oh, nothing. How you doing, guys? Good. Very good. Very good. Now, why... When I I said to you, I said, let's do a couple episodes. We'll do a pint movie invitational. You pick the movie. We'll do that later. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, would you want to do like a Triple T, a Trash Tolerable, a Treasure, a a List episode? He said, what's the List episode? I said, we we do lists, right? Countdown or something. I said, Countdown. And you came right back with this. So let's get into who you are, your show, and why you chose this idea. Okay, well... um the, the show we have is called Shocking Things. It's mace, uh, mostly revolves around horror and cult films. Uh, but also we had an episode with uh, author Jason Young, branched out a little bit about uh, Ben Cooper costumes. Okay, yep. So I, I collect those. I also collect action <coughs> figures. So that's why I came up with this idea, gave it to you, and you said, okay. So I thought it would be a fun idea to do that. Now, you specified pre-1990. Why is that? Uh, that's when the best toys are made, in my opinion. Okay. All right. Now, I think we could talk about our ages, because yeah. that might be important to this. John, yeah. how old are you? 47. I'm 46, Gary. I'm 41. Gary's the kid here. <laughs> yeah. you, you actually don't even have any gray hair yet. Oh, I do. Oh, do you? On your balls? I don't see any. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I got the bald spot that I keep shaved. All right. That's fair. That's fair. All right, Gary, why don't we start with you? Right? We usually start with the guests. Now, before we get into the list itself, here's the rule. Pine and Comics rules, right? Oh, Pine and Comics rules. 10 through 1. We're going to start at 10. We'll talk about it and why. I don't particularly care if you're in any order from 2 through 10. You don't have to be like, this is my number 10. Your number one's got to be your number one. Yes. Period. You get me? End of story. All right. You brought a box of shit. Yes, I did. This is a podcast. This is a podcast. So you did that for our benefit, me and John's benefit. I also did it for my benefit as well, because I have a horrible imagination. How do you have a horrible imagination? You don't. You're full of shit. (laughs) That's what they all tell me. All right. Gary, what's your number 10? My number 10. But before I get to my number 10. Oh, Jesus, God. (laughs) Well, you don't want to define what an action figure is? Well, here's the thing. We never really got tight on the rules. Oh. So John can say what he thinks defines an action figure, and I might pull a Lloyd, because I've got a few on here that might that might fuck with that construct. I could pull a Lloyd. I got honorable mentions. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I, I think the term came out uh, with G.I. Joe, correct? The 12-inch, the, the term action figure. Was Absolutely. First. Yeah, he would know that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could go farther back. There's a, a Superman that's made out of wood from the 40s, if you ever saw that, that's movable. But, I mean... You don't have to go create, but that term was from what, 1966? 64. Okay. And yeah. then I'm thinking Captain Action was 66. And then they, that's a superhero version, basically. Okay. The same with Stanley Weston. He sold the idea to Ideal. Oh, he did fuck. It first. You, you two are going to be best yeah. fucking friends. Yeah. <laughs> so just to give so you So what are you idea. doing afterwards? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so John, uh, maybe, uh, maybe shocking things in Chaplin's Assistant can, uh, do a crossover episode. We'll talk about Chaplin's okay. Assistant. At the end of the show, by the way, we're not gonna we're not gonna squeeze you out, Gary. That's fine. I'm not just a pimple. <laughs> All right. Well, so action figures, right? We're just we're That's figuring it. any any size, three and three quarter, or as you're calling on Chaplin's assistant lately, O ring. Well, that is the GI Joe um, real American hero construction from '82 to 2006 ish. But did they call them O rings and not like three and three quarter? Well, they were called three and three quarter, but now with the the retro collection at Walmart, 
they recall it. They're calling the vintage three and three quarter, but they're really the modern figures, which are four inch, but they're the different construction. They're all snapped together limbs. This is possibly the nerdiest episode I'm ever going to do, but that's cool. Oh, and then it gets worse. So they even predates the, the GI Joe with like uh, Micronauts and Buck Rogers, yeah. you know, black hole. So, I mean, so, but nobody uses it really in that. But it's just like a GI Joe, pretty much really like the people that use O ring for the term. John, you do remember we have a really popular article on pinocomics.com? You know, I don't suggest anybody go to that website because our website is hot garbage, and I'll fully admit that. For it's, it's for reasons out of my hands. I've given up on the website. But our most popular of all time, this is not a joke, article was Gary did an article all about how to restore the O-rings and fixed figures. Oh, okay. It has... The, it's stratospheric, the views okay, on this thing. Awesome. Yeah, Congratulations, Gary. Thank you. You beat John. Yeah, Paul, trust me. <laughs> trust me. Yeah, I, I would shut the thing down if I could. I'm not in charge of that. Sir John's still in charge of the website, and that it shows because it's fucking garbage. But all right, so I'm excited to talk about action figures. All right. Well, I'm just going to say before I start with my number ten, my general rule of thumb with action figures: if the pants come off, it's a doll. <laughs> okay. There's okay. Be a lot of dolls I, I'm on my list. That from, I'm borrowing that from Retro Blasting, but. It's true for me. I was going to say, I don't title the episodes with a funny saying anymore. I used to do that. That would have been the title. If the pants come <laughs> off, it's a doll. So it's it's honorarily. That's the name. That Okay, great. Thank okay. you. But number 10, getting finally to that, I'm going to start with Masters of the Universe, Battle Armor He-Man from 1983. The drum that rolled in the chest? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a cool figure. Yeah, you, you switch it back. I had, I'm not sure if. At this point in my memory, if I had He-Man or Skeletor, but I remember, yeah, you hit it once, it had one slash across the chest, and you hit it twice, it had two slashes across the chest. I had both, bitch. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I had I both. both. Yeah, no, those, those are great figures. Yeah. yeah. And, they're, and it's fun. I had to pick something from Masters of the Universe because it's one of the big four from the 1980s. And it's a weird size. What size are those? Five and a half. Okay. And they were just weird proportions. Yeah. Well, they're all fucking steroided out. <laughs> How is Skeletor a muscle guy when he's a skeleton? I never understood that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you prefer that one to original He-Man? Well, one of the things that I'm looking at my list is I'm looking at them as toys. I'm looking at them from a, I don't, I'm going to take the TV show and comic books. And I'm just going to throw that all the window. I'm going to concentrate on the toy inside the package where the action figure is the most attractive part of what you're getting in. And that will come into play later in my list. Okay. All right. So do you have any information? Like, I, I don't have all this necessarily, but like year. 1983, Mattel. Did you say that already? Yes, I did. Then I'm a douchebag. I'm sorry. I was <laughs> I was just, I was, you did the right thing though. You said that. And I went back to 1983 and I remember me getting that toy and Skeletor too, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and like, you know, having them hit each other in the chest with the sword of Eternia and the barrel rolling around and the excitement. The, the one thing I didn't realize, I was like. About a month ago, I didn't realize the two swords from He-Man. Snap and together. You fuck f- you. Yeah, well, fuck <laughs> you. That's it. I'm almost embarrassed now. I, I was, I was I hyping didn't you know up. that. Gary knows everything. Yeah, you put them together. But it's like too big to actually fit in the, the hand. If you yes. remember as a kid, it didn't really fit. Well, and also it had that knuckle guard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'll go second. We'll let John go last on the first round. So this is an, my picks are heavily nostalgia. Okay. These might not be the coolest action figures, but heavy nostalgia. Kenner, circa 1980, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back comes out. And it's not the coolest figure in the lot, but it was my favorite character. And it's what I did with this thing all the time. Lobot. No. (laughs) I still have Lobot. Hoth Gear Han Solo. And the reason is, is because I was a big Star Wars fan. I loved it. I used to put him in a cup of water all the time and freeze him in my freezer all the time. Carbonite. And it's it's just a memory that pops out to me. It's not even the best Han Solo figure, probably. No, I did no. the same thing. Yeah. I, put, I put it with Coke. You know, put it in the Oh, house. fuck. You're a mo- yeah. You have a much better imagination than me. <laughs> much better. <laughs> it, it's just, it's one of my favorites, you know. And then on the package, you know, you had that great, he's on the Tauntaun. And it's just, it brings memories back. That's how my list is going to be the whole way through. That's my easiest of all of them. So that's all I'm going to say about that one. John, what do you got for number 10? For, uh, number 10 is uh, Flynn from the Tron line from Tomy 1982. I, I love the translucent figures. I think Flynn actually looks better than Tron, actually, if you just look at them. That that was the one I actually bought as a kid because I thought that was the coolest looking one. When I saw him on the shelf, that's the one I wanted. I loved that the was film. the That was the was Bridges blue. character. Yes. Yeah. And he had like a, a sash. 
If you add, oh, I, I had the figures. I had yeah. the light cycles. Yes, yeah. No, I had. Not. I think I had all three colors, Gary, or at least two colors. I'm thinking yellow and red, maybe. And they had the glow in the dark disc that you could put on their back. So I, I like that feature also. I'm a sucker for the glow in the dark. Also with the and the paint too was almost like um, which like black light type neon yeah. paint. That's really cool. Did you ever? Are you a Tron fan? I like Tron the movie. I never got into the toys because it was before my time. I never liked Tron. I had the toys. I, you know, I, as a kid, I think I kind of cursorily liked it. Uh, a couple of years ago, I rewatched it. I hated it. <laughs> I do like the sequel, though. Yeah, and the, the, they're both good. The, the, the original Tron does move very slow at oh, times. Fuck, it's glacial. <laughs> it's like, when you watch it, it's like it has so much potential to be better. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was groundbreaking. Absolutely, yeah. I always wondered, too, uh, and, and Lou, of, uh, <laughs> Lou Skywalker and me had talked about this before, the concept of those discs are like their identity and like their memory and everything. Yet they also fight with them and throw them everywhere. <laughs> doesn't make much sense. No, but that's the concept. Yeah. Cause without that, what do you have? You know, you can just reset. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Anyways, Tron, Tron. Uh, uh, so did you get the rest of the figures or, or did you only keep the, did you only have the Flynn? I just had him. That was it. And I was, I remember I got punished. My grandfather got me a uh, Sark and I got punished. My dad said, you can't have this for whatever reason. I can't remember it. So then, uh, who knows? He might've returned it to the store. Jesus. <laughs> he was like, Tron sucks. <laughs> well, we got, we got a little a peek into, into John's horrible childhood <laughs> with his maniac father returning, <laughs> returning toys to Caldors because John like didn't throw the garbage out in time. <laughs> All right, Gary, what's your number nine? Number nine from 1978, although you could have gotten a coupon for him in 1977, Kenner, Star Wars, Darth Vader. Ooh, Darth Vader. Darth Vader, number nine. Did he have, he had the lightsaber that came out of the hand? Yes, he did. He was originally offered with the double telescoping lightsaber for maximum pleasure, but it was, for whatever reason, they... Stopped making it that way because probably because of tooling or just breakage. Some so kid, some kid, fucking put his eye out with it. Probably you're gonna put your eye out with that lightsaber. Stop kids, playing with it. Kids back then were always fucking blasting themselves down the throat with a missile or something. <laughs> yeah. Harry palms. We can't we can't have a, a backpack missile Boba Fett because some kid swallowed a Battlestar well, Galactica. That's a, that's a rumor too. That's not a real story. Is that really true? Yeah. It's not real. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> well, the rumor was strong enough to cancel the toy. Well, no, it, was, it happens. Uh, it was uh, the development of the figure that had too many issues with it, with the breaking the levers, things of that nature. Okay. It's one of those urban legends that just... Jesus. Yeah. Are you going to tell me the kid from Life Serial didn't really die on Pop Rocks? <laughs> he didn't, no. John, can you leave my house now? <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about all these nasty rumors as if they're true. So did you ever have the 78 version? or My brother had this Star Wars line. He was, he's eight years older than me and he had the figures and he moved out of the house and I was like 11 and I'm like, well, what am I going to do with all these toys that I don't want to play with? Well, I traded my brother's Star Wars action figures, including the Darth Vader for G.I. Joe's. You're fucking, you really, you're wearing a G.I. Joe's shirt tonight too. <laughs> what, what? I, it's what I do. G.I. Gary. Gary, I always get a great sense of, of pride on this though. And I want to bring it up again a couple years ago. Oh no. I wanted to go to New York Comic Con, and I was a little low on cash that year. So I had found my original G.I. Joes from when I was a kid. And I said, hey, Gary, would you like to buy them from me? And you said, sure. You bought them from me. I got to go to New York Comic Con. But what did you remark about my figures? And every time on an episode with you, you always make me say this. They were the mintest figures I've ever bought and used. You want to hear why? I don't know if I ever told you this. I played with my figures as a kid. I wasn't like, they weren't in the package. I wasn't like, not outside. I didn't bring my toys outside as a kid. I don't know why. I just didn't. It happens. Yeah. I know you still do. I see the pictures of you <laughs> out Actually, there. I take them outside more now than I did when I was a kid. Yeah. I don't think I ever took them outside with the kid. I didn't want to lose accessories. I, I grew up in, in a um, neighborhood in, in Middletown where it was like uh, apartments, and I was friends with a bunch of kids, but it was the kind of place that if you left something behind, it ain't going to be there the next day. You know, like you got a house, right. you leave it in the backyard, it's there, unless your dog swallowed it. I didn't have that. <laughs> nope. And for whatever reason, they came, They lasted a long time. I played with my figures for a very long time. Yeah. Into the 90s. Well, just to reiterate. I was in high school still playing with G.I. Joe's. Best, best, most mintest collection of figures you ever purchased was from who again? John. All right. Just want to hear that. <laughs> just like to hear that. 
Welcome to the Johnny Ganache Masturbatory episode of All the Toys I Had and How Great They Were. All right. You know what? I'm going to throw uh, the, my Masters of the Universe pick in here. Uh, not the first initial wave. Fisto? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we'll talk about Fisto later. Trapjaw. Nice. That's a cool figure. Yeah. It's, it, to me, it's aesthetically and accessory-wise probably the coolest of the early Masters of the Universe figures. Right? He's got the jaw that opens and, you know, looks sharp. Right? It looks like it looks like it could fucking he can destroy metal. Then you got the arm. The arm pops off, and you could put on, I think there was a laser blaster. And Instead of me saying, I think, John, what were the fucking accessories? I think accessories? there was a hook. Yes, yeah, so I'm not huge into Masters oh, of the okay. I'm like more 70s toys, actually. Okay, all right. But uh, yeah, And it, uh, he had a loop on his head. He had a loop a on string, his head. And he, some of them came with a glow-in-the-dark ring. Do you remember that? I think it had like Castle Grayskull oh, on maybe. it. Maybe. I, I don't off the top of my head, but it sounds familiar. Yeah. Gary, how do you feel about Trapjaw? I think Trapjaw is a solid choice. He's one of uh, Skeletor's minions. Yes. Yeah. He had like Trap a pur- jaw. He had like a purplish helmet. <laughs> Snapped Evil Lin. Yeah, Evil Lin. The belt too. Read the belt with the that have skull and crossbones on the belt. I'm trying to think. Now I think right so because I think he had a pirate motif. I think there was a like a piratey kind of thing going on with him. Yeah, piratey thing. Um, what was it? I don't know if you've been to the stores lately, but they have the the retro collection for Masters of the Universe, and they just came out with a, a Trap Jaw Skeletor two pack. Where they're before they turned into skeleton the, or trap the jaw. origins. I saw yeah, the that. origins. I actually, yeah. it's funny you say this. I actually was at Walmart a couple weeks ago, and I almost bought it because I've been staying away from those Masters of the Universe figures. Yeah, they're they're very tempting, but they have the battle damage He Man and Skeletor. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and I I think I saw Skeletor, and I was I had it in my hand, and I put it back because I'm like I'm not starting with this shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm they, not starting with this shit. I'm already buying like Transformers things and. Those Marvel three and three quarters they're coming out with? No, no more. John, number nine, what do you got? Uh, Frankenstein's Monster uh, from Remco 1980, the eight inch version. Has, they did a whole. It's, it's a doll, it has clothes. Uh oh. Bum, bum, bum. This is going to be a good doll list. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, I don't know. Are you guys familiar with that or no? No, that's. It, it so- again, it sounds familiar to me, but not, not like. Came totally. In a, came in a window box. It had uh, beautiful paintings of each character. So I had the Frankenstein's monster painting. Uh, he had like almost like satin type clothes with the you know the green shirt, glow in the dark head and hands, and then uh, had the, the monster crushing action. Monster crushing yeah, action. So yeah. So his, his arms went like this. Did to, it come to, with to, to like hug you? That's oh, that's what, great. Did it come with a little girl for him to drown? No, no. no. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> they they weren't thinking ahead like that. They would do that nowadays. Oh but. yeah. But no, but the, and it also came with a, a patch, an iron-on patch, and a, a ring, too. Glow-in-the-dark ring. So I always liked that figure. I love that movie. So that's why it's, it's one of my it's one of my top for the top ten. I'm, gonna, I'm sticking with that. Do you have it still or no? Yeah. This oh, guy. that's awesome. A lot of the stuff I rebought, you know, obviously. I don't have the, like, I, I like package stuff, so I bought it in the box. Like, okay. Yeah, I'm an in-the-box guy, too. Totally. Gary's not. <laughs> Screw boxes. It's packaging. <laughs> Gary, what's your number, what, eight? Number eight. He stole the show in 1986's hit blockbuster movie, Transformers, Grimlock. Oh, okay. Leader of the Dinobots. Oh, there. You fucking guy. <laughs> this, this isn't an original. That is an original. This is an original? Yeah, I don't own copies, fakes, whatever you want to call them. Was he not diecast back then? <laughs> yeah, the if you flip out the... Feet, you'll find the die cast part of him. I think it's his chest. Oh, okay. It's been a while. But, oh, man, I forgot how tight this guy is. So <laughs> tight. Oh, I don't want to. Yeah, 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 stop. Stop. You're making me nervous. <laughs> you're making me nervous. 35 years old, and I have, I've transferred them all twice. Gary, you're going to break your fucking Grimlock, and you're going to start crying on my podcast. I can't handle that. That makes great radio. Great <laughs> ratings. Think of the ratings. Adult men crying. <laughs> Adult men crying, crying over plastic dinosaur robot. What is there not to love about Grimlock? He, without take, taking his media appearances out of that are absolutely hilarious and lovable, he is a transforming dinosaur robot. It doesn't get much more 1985 than that. It's a police helicopter above head. If you hear that, by the way. Yeah, he wants to know where I got this. <laughs> he wants, yeah. <laughs> He's, he's Did you current. steal that Grimlock? It's Blue Thunder from 1983. <laughs> he's, <laughs> using, he's using his X-ray vision to see uh, to see Gary's nerdy toy. You, did you say he he debuted in the movie? No, he didn't debut in the mu- movie. He was in the s- technically the second season of the of the Transformers because he was released in 1985 as a license from Takara. He was originally from the Japanese 
Diaclone line. It was uh, it was uh, the Diaclone Robo, uh, Dinosaur Robo, in 1983, and then Hasbro licensed it out in 1985. I had all of them. I had all of them. I had, well, I didn't have Grimlock. My brother had Grimlock. Is that your brother's Grimlock? No, it's not. You rebought that at some point. Yeah, and I sold his at some point. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> All right, let's go to my number eight. One, was his catchphrase, me Grimlock? Me Grimlock! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fucking nerds. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, I'm going to go with a G.I. Joe pick. And uh, here's where I break the rules a little bit, because it's actually two figures. It's not one. And I remember very specifically when these characters debuted, for whatever reason, now I had all the G.I. Joes, for whatever reason, he, these two, when they came out, were hard to find. Like, brand new. And I remember coming home from school one day and my mom calling stores to see if they had them. And the store that had them was in Meriden. And they were like, we have two left. And my mom was like, mom, love you. You don't listen, but love you anyway. <laughs> and she took me and we got them. That is awesome. The Paoli twins, right? Tomax and Zamot, right? So these are two twins, Cobra, Crimson Guard, uh, like captains, right? Is that what they were? Commanders. Considered? Commanders. They can feel each other's pain. They look exactly the same, but mirror image. And I always fuck this up. Zaymot has the scar? Yes, Zaymot is the scar. Easy way to remember that. X marks the spot. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you have them with you? Are they on your list? Well, they're not on my list, but I'm borrowing my box data for my <clears throat> eBay. Oh, uh, okay. No plugs. Uh, but this is him in his business uniform from 2005. Oh, I was going to say, this is not what I, I had. The, the one I had had the... The silver collars. Yeah, they're very like, circusy looking. They look like they were fucking rejects from circus. Well, that's why they were all acrobats. You ever remember the cartoon? Oh, right, they right. They would right. jump out of extensive enterprises and go down the poles. Yeah. But it was it was just for again a nostalgia pick. They're not the coolest figures, but the idea of two mirrored in, image figures that can feel each other's pain. I loved it. They were cool. I like the packaging too. Do you remember how the mirror yes. mirror each? There's another one like a why well, I like the packaging for certain figures, like that looked fun. It was like a box almost, like a window box. Yep. I just, I specifically remember not being able to find them. Oh, they were tough. I Am remember. I, okay, so thank you. I, sometimes I think, what's that Mandela effect where you think you're, you think you remember ship, you're making it up? No, that they were tough when they first came out because there was commercials constantly yeah. playing, I remember. So everybody wanted them. And didn't, did they, they didn't come with, but the ferret, right? The what, ferret ATV, yeah. That came out along with them or? Well, that, yeah, 1985 was a huge year of Joe. They, I mean, they were, they were on stunts. They were still peaking in popularity. They were just rocketing. I yeah. I re, I've heard stories from a lot of kids that are lo, or guys that are a little older than us or me that, that that have the same stories where they were searching for. They were parents were calling stores looking for these figures. Yeah, they were hot. Only one I can remember ever having my parents call on. You know, only yeah, one. The, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow at the time were really really hot. Also, yeah. yeah. And I say this, you know. I don't want to brag, but, you know, I say thank you and I love you, Mom. But I think the true way, you know, my parents love me is that they got me a flag when I was a kid. I had yeah, a flag. They bought you all the toys. I had a flag, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I look back on it and uh, we, my, my dad worked and my mom worked part-time, mostly mostly a, a housewife. Uh, and I think a lot of it was compensation maybe for, you know, maybe thinking – I don't know. But I definitely got what I wanted as a kid in terms of, like, toys and stuff. So I, I don't, I'm not bragging by saying that. I'm, I was very lucky. That's what I'm trying to say. But I had a flag, too, that I'm bragging about. <laughs> <laughs> it filled up my very small bedroom. I had to walk around it for a year. Still pissed <laughs> I don't have that anymore. All right, John, number eight, what do you got? Uh, the 12-inch Cylon Centurion from Battlestar Galactica by Mattel in 1979, I believe it came out. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. It's got uh, yep. the eye glows. He's got a chest piece that glows. He has this little... Um, laser pistol. They all, like, when you press this lever on his back, they hide the batteries in it. It makes everything glow red. And yes, I didn't have it, but I remember it. And this was, they repurposed it from another Mattel figure called Captain Laser from the 60s. <laughs> so they didn't, they saved money on the mold, they just reused it. There's a lot of that going on yes. in toys. I thought you were reaching in to grab one. <laughs> Gary went into his box, he has his little <laughs> box with him, I'm like... I'm trying to keep the transition. He's like the fucking Gallagher of podcasting. <laughs> So you you still have this or not? This, yep. Yeah, I rebought it. Like everything. I'm only going to ask yeah. you. I, I'm not going to ask him because I know yeah. he has all of it yeah. and he's had, got it in the fucking yeah. box over here. Yeah. So you rebought it? Yes. Yep. In box or no? Yes, in the box. All right. The box is part of it. Window box has a painting of the Cylon on it. It's now you host the show with your wife. Yes, and you know I have guests too. But yeah, but 
for the most part. She's yes. she's kind of like your 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 main co-host. Yes. And she's obviously into like the horror movies and stuff. She, Where does she stand on this shit? Like um, she thinks it's a little ridiculous. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because you keep saying like I rebought this, and I'm like, like where? So well, I bought this stuff like twenty, thirty years ago. Some of the stuff. Oh, too. okay, okay. Yeah. But like now, like now, you get the hankering. You're on eBay. She like it's, looking over your shoulder. It's, I bought the stuff when the prices weren't crazy. Okay, but I'm saying if yeah. you if you see if you're like, hmm, I'm you're, very, you're on eBay. Does she ever like what the fuck is he buying? Nah, because I'm very specific now. Okay, it's just I don't. Impulse buy, I tell you something I really want, and I, or I won't buy it. Okay. Just checking. Yeah. <laughs> Just taking the temperature on your relationship status, that's all. Because <laughs> Gary's wife is tired of his shit big time. <laughs> Gary, how many? I know, I know. It's amazing that you were able to uh, get her get, get the schedule away. She's like, oh, my God, you're going to talk about toys again, aren't you? And, and, and I know your wife won't listen to this. So how many storage units do you have now? Just one. Just, okay. I thought you got the two. I'm tr- I was almost a two. Okay. I, at one point, I was almost a two, but I've had to start downsizing for a variety of reasons. And how many flags do you currently own, Gary? Just one. <laughs> but you had two up until like a year ago. I had no. I, it was like two, three years ago. I sold my second one. In the last five years, you own two. You don't have flags. me on this podcast enough, John. <laughs> I know it's been a while. For anybody out there that doesn't know what we're talking about. The USS flag was the six foot long. Yeah, I know you want to correct me. Five foot ten inches. Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Uh, um, G.I. Joe uh, aircraft, aircraft carrier. carrier. 99. Greatest fucking, greatest playset or vehicle play of set. all time. Oh, that's playset. It doesn't float. It's a playset. Yeah. Greatest playset of anything ever, in my opinion, of all time. Oh, absolutely. That is a centerpiece. Yeah. I, I still, I honestly, I don't wish I even had my, I sold you my figure collection. I wish I had my flag. And I have a small house. I would find somewhere for that motherfucker. <laughs> it would be in the kitchen, on, on the counter. It's it belongs. Yeah, it's just you just got to worry about your dogs just breaking. Yeah, I'd have to figure that out. All right, well, it's, since we're already talking to you, Gary, what's your number seven? Oh, number seven is from 1986. Hasbro Serpentor. So, oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm doing a video. No, I'm not doing a video damn podcast. No, but uh, yeah, Serpentor's number six, and Serpentor's my number six because not only is he garish and beautiful in gold. And he has those beautiful white fangs that cover his cowl. Stupid fucking character. He's <laughs> fucking awesome, dude. Stupid fucking character. He's not he, stupid. He's created from the DNA of Hitler and Genghis Khan. No, I, the greatest leaders, not the losers. I don't think I... Not, I, not going after the losers. Yeah, we're going after the winners. I don't think I ever had a... Um, he has a big Serpentor. hands. You didn't get Sprinter for me, right? No, absolutely not. Because I think I was out of collecting by that point. You were out... You, were, you had some 1986 figures. Did I? He, he was 86, you said, right? Yeah, 86. And he came with his like his stupid chariot, right? Air chariot, right? Yeah, bring it out. <laughs> Fuck. Shh. Yeah, I certainly never had this stupid piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, it's breaking on you. Yeah, because anyway, the gold plastic. Okay, seems I don't right. want to touch your stuff because I'm afraid you're going to sue me. But no, it's okay. I know where you live. All right. So Serpentor, really? Like Sir, I, I chose Serpentor over Cobra Commander. You're not going to find. Yeah, there's a spoiler for my list. The, no Cobra Commander. The worst version of Cobra Commander is ten times better than the best version of Serpentor. The worst version of Cobra Commander you've never seen. Well, okay, I'm I'm going with three that I can think of. Hooded. Hooded. Mirrored uh, helmet. Mirrored helmet. And then the battle one. Yeah, that's the worst battle one. armor. That's the worst one. Yeah, you should look for Disco one from 1991. Okay. That All one's right. really d- disgusting. Okay, well, if we're talking about pre-1990. Yeah, well. The worst Cobra Commander is still ten times cooler than John. Where do you sit on Serpentor? This is when G.I. Joe jumped the shark. Like yeah. This, uh, with Cobra Law, when that, when the movie came out, all this type of, I don't know what you call it. Garbage. It's just, it got too science fiction. And it got like too, you know, it's time when I got a little too ridiculous where I'm like, all right, I'm out. I, right. don't, I don't care anymore. Well, he, he's got, he's. I stayed up late one night to watch G.I. Joe the movie on WPIX. <laughs> I like, loved it. Well, I was going to say recently or. <laughs> So I fear you must have it on Blu-ray. Oh, of course I have it on Blu-ray, and oh. I did watch it two days ago. Did you really? Yes, I did. All right, let's go to my number seven. Uh, all right, here's an interesting one. Uh, I think Remco? 82, comic book, Marvel. Anybody want to guess? Was it Conan? No, no, an original. Oh, it was DC, right? Did you go about Warlord? No, no, I'm talking Wait, Marvel. Marvel? 82, an original oh. property. Was it a Crystar? Crystar. Okay. I was my head's thinking. Crystal like, Warrior. Or, yes. Those Crystar are the Crystal figures. Warrior. I had the comics as a kid and I loved them. And I had a, I had most of the toys as a kid. And the one that I picked, um, Crystar was great. So in this one, 
the good guys were all like these translucent crystalline looking figures and the bad guys were like li- like rock monster L- magma lava, yeah. la- lava you know uh, i picked warbo he was kind of like the han solo kind of character green he had a bandolier of arrows and he had a he had a crossbow an eye patch right and an eye patch yeah. and part of and i still remember this I, I 11 issues i think it was i wish i still had it but in the first issue there's this evil wizard and him and the evil wizard basically shoot each other's eyes out <laughs> very much like a Christmas story. But yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, Remco made it. Can't read my notes here. They sold it to ALN in Europe once they failed. They failed miserably in America. And I think the most probably lasting legacy of um, Christar is the Danzig skull. I, I, I was going to say, technically, I have a uh, Christar tattoo. Okay, yeah, because you have the Danzig skull? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a uh, scary Larry Dwyer, who's on the show all the time, runs the Connecticut Cold Classics. He did not know that. And he's a big Misfits really? fan. I'm amazed he didn't know that. I told him that. I'm like, I'm like, you know that the Danzig skull was ripped off from a comic book. And he's like, no. I think it's issue nine. Uh, Michael Golden. Yeah. I, 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 did you ever meet? I'm sure you met Mike Golden. I've never. Actually, I've, he's okay. been in a million shows. I don't think okay. I've ever talked to him. Uh, yeah. And he sells shirts with the Danzig skull. Instead of saying Danzig, it says Golden on it. It should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because the craziest thing is, and maybe you know more than me, because I, I honestly don't know the answer. How come there was never any legality? I don't know. Because it's not like Danzig said, I like that skull. I'm going to have someone draw something like it. It's the fucking Danzig, same thing. Danzig steals a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, the, the Misfits, the logos from Famous Monsters, the film and magazine, uh, you know, Crimson Ghost. He just stole that from the serial. You okay. Know, you know, uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. What the, I think because if you change it enough, because it's kind of obstructed. If you ever look at the, the artwork, it has Chris Star like fighting and it's kind of like in the background of the skull. Right. So maybe if it's original enough, you can get away with it legally, I'm thinking. All right. I'll post it when we put this episode All out. Right. I'll post a picture of the. Of the logo and that, and and we'll we'll we'll, we'll scream into the heavens to Glenn Danzig to fucking stop this bullshit and pay Michael Golden. And then he stole from a Batman cover too uh, for a Sam Hain, one of his other bands. Too. Oh, really? I, I I'll find it. I'll show you. Yeah, he stole like these skeletons. He stole that from a Batman cover. You unoriginal fucking <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Danzig. You unoriginal fucking bastard. All right, John. What is your number seven? Uh, number seven is Faker from the Masters Universe line. Oh, uh, Blue He Man. The re- because it combines He Man and Skeletor. Yeah. I, I love the, the evil versions of characters, like, you know, like Spock. You just put a beard on him. <laughs> Goatee Spock. You know? yeah. So I, I love the blue. He's got the red hair, but then he has an orange, like, breastplate, you know, the, the yeah. uh, Skeletors and the, the orange sword. And then uh, I get a kick out of these ridiculous novelties. He had a sticker on his chest. Of robot circuitry. Do you remember that? If you pull it yeah. off, there's a little sticker that can easily come off. And I, I love that gimmick as a kid. You notice we none of us have said actual like original He Man yet. It's yeah, like no, battle. Well, he was a good. I mean, it was a good. It, I liked He Man before the cartoons. If you read the little comics, oh yeah, oh yeah, the comics are they're awesome. Great, but then you watch a cartoon and they're pretty ridiculous. But the actual, they're almost like Conan comics. Yeah, they're heavy. DC did an omnibus of those a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Yes, because uh, they have the rights. I think right now they're partnered with Mattel. Yeah, because they still do. Like they had a, there was like a Masters of the Universe um, series a couple years ago, and then there was like a Masters of the Universe versus you know Star Trek. You know how they do that shit. But I remember uh, they did the um, He Man minis. Okay. It was either a trade or an omnibus. It was a hardcover. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I remember having the comics as a kid. There were there. I actually enjoyed the comic books more than the toys. Masters I, I love Masters yeah. of the Universe as a kid. Out of all of the, f- you said the big four before. Who would you say the big four? GI Joe, Transformers, Masters of the Universe, and Star Wars. Yep. Masters is the one that resounds with me the less as an adult. Like it just, I don't know. I watched that Kevin Smith series. I wasn't as mad as some people were because I don't have that kind of, I guess, a, a f- affection for it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, Gary, what's but, number six? Number six. You're ever. This is gonna. You're gonna hate me for this one. This one's low. Don't hurt me, Gary. No, that's fine. I'm just going into my box. Oh, Jesus. Oh. 1985 Snake Eyes, this version is 2. Version 2. This is when he became more of a ninja and less of a commando. He, correct. This is when yeah. he got the sword. He had timber. The visor. The visor. The night visor, yes. I haven't seen the movie night. yet. John, have you seen the movie? No, I don't I'll care. See I'll see it eventually, but it's like... I'm, I'm in the same boat as yeah. you. Is it true that the fucking the helmet and the visor is like the last scene of the movie? 
Spoiler alert, yes. Fuck this. Okay. Well, all all right. the, yeah, everything I see is of the actor unmasked. Right. So well, I, you pay for you pay for a handsome actor, you gotta show the handsome actor. You got a crush on this guy or what? No, I'm just saying from you know, movie making logic. Okay. Which isn't any, but talking about the action figure that's absolutely freaking awesome to make it to number six on my list. You know, he came with a he came with his pet timber. Not really a pet, but you know, he's a wolf. Yeah. You know, an Uzi, a sword. Cool backpack to store the sword. I loved him. Oh yeah, he's he's a total badass. Yeah, it feels like such a like a like a Homer thing to say when like they say who's your favorite GI Joe character. It's like when someone says who's your favorite X Men, you go Wolverine. You know who my favorite X Men is Wolverine. <laughs> you know who my favorite GI Joe character is Snake Eyes. You know you feel like you're not like original, like original, but it's like they're the coolest fucking characters. You know that's and, how I feel. So. Yeah, you know what the Wolverine. And- Snake Eyes both have in common? Larry Hama. That's right. Yep. Yep. Larry Hama, who at one point uh, at, uh, what was it? Plastic City Comic Con. Plastic City Comic Con in uh, in Plastic City, uh, what was it? Le- Leo Minster, Massachusetts, two years ago. Piney Comics was there. Me. With the best donuts. Yeah. Me, Chris Frodell, and Lou hanging out all day long. We had a table there. We were going to uh, give out stuff and do stuff. And before the show started, Larry Hama was like the guest of honor. He comes out where it was in a, a hockey ring. He comes out and walks around. Comes to our table. He's looking at our table. And I'm like, fuck, Larry Hama is interested in what we're doing. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying I had asked Larry Hama to be on the radio show a couple years prior. He responded and very nicely just said, I don't do stuff like that that much anymore. I'm not really promoting anything. I'm only, you know, I'm writing the G.I. Joe book for IDW. Thank you, but I don't think I'd, it'd be that interesting, you know. So he was he was polite. I've met him before at cons. He's looking at our table. He's got his hands behind his back. Like, hey, that's fucking Larry Hama. You know, he's thinking to himself, I think I have a restraining order on this guy. <laughs> yeah. And then he looks at me and goes, where do I get the coffee? <laughs> and I went, <laughs> I went, oh, Larry Ham was only interested in that. He thought we were the snack table. <laughs> so, so fuck you, pint of comics. <laughs> I want a pint of coffee. Yeah. I'd rather have a pint of coffee than your stupid podcast. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Uh, snake Eyes is a great choice. It's a great choice. Yeah, I mean, he's absolutely, you know, as a figure, he's awesome. You know, if you bought him off the rack, the 85, again, the year nobody could find figures, you know, they're calling stores, you know, people called stores looking for Snake Eyes. You know, you think of the artwork on the on the card, you know, G.I. Joe had awesome artwork on every single figure and, you know, by Hector Garrido, it sold the figure. And then you flip it over and you have the, you know, the 32 figures, the little, like little the uh, file card. postage stamp. And then you had the file card. You know, the file card sells the figure, too. You know, it's like marketing, too. It's, he is a sword unsheathed, flailing in the dark. <clears throat> Whoa. The G.I. Joe team was there to, to put him in its scabbard. I, cl- I, I clipped all those files. I had a little, like, recipe box my mom gave me. They were all in there, and I could read about Wild Weasel and, <laughs> and you know, all that stuff. <laughs> all right, that's your number six. My number six. Uh, John had mentioned this earlier, funnily enough. Uh, um, first movie that I ever saw in the movie theaters as a kid. My parents took me to see it. I can kind of, it's an early memory too. And uh, plus they've told me the story. I can remember being dragged out of the theater. I was crying so hard at the end because one of my favorite characters got killed. The black hole. Okay. Who made these figures? Uh, Migo. Migo. Okay. You're right. It was, it was right before Migo kind of went under. Well, it's when they didn't get the, the Star Wars license, they just pumped out a million different sci-fi licenses, hoping this would, you know, really, Make up for uh, losing Star Wars, that license, but it didn't really go anywhere. Right. So the Black Hole, Amigo, coolest figure in the line was Maximilian, right? Coolest character in the movie. You ever see the movie, Gary? It's been probably 30 years since I've seen the movie. It's I've, I've watched it recently. It's still a joy to watch because of my affinity for it. It's it's the stupidest goddamn movie on Earth. You like the little robot. Oh, the, sci- the science is fucking the worst science of any movie ever. I think Neil deGrasse Tyson, this is not a joke. Has said the black hole is the most ridiculous movie. Really? Yeah. Well, the, the, the hull is breached at the end. And they're just running through hallways and there's just <laughs> like the vacuum of space isn't killing anybody. It's bad. Vincent, the Vincent figure. Now, I cried because of old Bob. Old Bob sacrifices himself at the end so they can get away. Parents had to drag me out screaming. But the Vincent figure, I remember very vividly. Like when John had this idea, I sat there and I went, am I going with coolest or am I going with what affects me? I'm going with affects me. That's my. That's how I'm going. And the Vincent figure, I remember his little ball and piston legs pulled out. Okay. And he had a little tray. Yeah, a little clear, like acrylic. Because he wouldn't sit up normally. 
that had two little pegs or like divots for the balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you would jam Vincent's balls in these divots, <laughs> and you'd grind them in these divots. And Vincent would go, "Oh yeah, no." And I just, I, I, I remember that, and I'm very fond of that. So, uh, and I think it's a. a Can we get it on record that you're very fond of grinding balls, grinding, grinding Vincent's balls? Roddy McDowell, by the way, played played the voice of Vincent. Uh, just it just it brings back a memory to me, and uh, thanks for sharing that with me, guys. <laughs> What's your number six? Uh, number six, uh, it's another doll. The 12-inch Enemy Visitor V doll by L. Jam from 1984. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love V. You guys familiar v, with the... V. Have you seen the, the doll or no? Yeah, the rubber mask? Yeah, so if you pull off the mask, yeah, uh, you see the lizard underneath it. But when you have the mask on, I think that was cool. You press a lever, the tongue would come through the mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was cool about it. And it came with sunglasses and a little uh, blaster. Yeah, you know, I didn't have it, but I remember, and I, I absolutely love the show. I love the miniseries and yes. both miniseries, the show, Ham Tyler. First time I yes. ever saw Michael Ironside in anything. Gary, are you familiar with you're, you're I'm quiet. familiar with V. I'm familiar with V. I've watched it. I've never really paid attention to the lo- toy prop to toys based on some of these properties that John yeah. is bringing up because he's a little older than me by six years, so. I am skewed. I like I like how you like worked at saying yeah. that nicely. Yeah, John's has not more an old guy. You're it's like you're like he's a he's a fucking dinosaur. <laughs> compared, I'm 41. I'm still in the peak of my life. He's got one foot in the grave. <laughs> he's got more hair than me. He's but hey, more. okay. But no, V is V is awesome. I, v V is one of those like media things that I I first associated with. I know there was a toy line. But like the V series is is awesome. I remember watching it in syndication afterwards, and it, it was it's compelling. It's it's great television. For a first time, I mean, it's 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 completely like a like a Nazi parallel, right? Mm-hmm. Even when I got older, and you know, learn more about like you know World War II and that, and you go back and see bits of V, you're like, holy shit, their uniforms look like the and the their it, logo is similar the logo to is swastika. almost a swastika. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Propaganda posters that yeah. they had like all over the city, and they they just wanted to fucking drain the earth. And and the great thing about the the if I remember correctly, the great thing about the miniseries was you, you were slow to learn, right? I think there was the rebels kind of knew, but as a viewer, you didn't see all that mm-hmm. shit or learn their plot right away. If yeah. I remember correctly, yes. and Mark Singer, the Beastmaster, He's awesome. <laughs> and uh, I I remember being like eight years old and thinking, um, the woman who played Diana was fine. Oh yeah, fine, oh, yeah. fine, fine. Yeah. Fine. Yes. Fine. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the first time you met Michael Ironside, and um, and for me, um, with Jane Badler, Fre- Jane Badler, uh, but uh, Freddy Krueger. Um, oh yes, That's he was right. the sympathetic. He was the, the Willie. Willie. He played the nice visitor yeah. who would, like help them out. I'm just. Do you remember he kept saying that instead of I'm lost because he didn't. Uh, I don't English. remember that. Yeah, but he kept saying to people, "I'm just," and like you're just what? Then uh, he's like, "I don't know where to go." He goes, "Oh, you're lost." Yes. I'm lost. It was shocking when that girl had the lizard baby. Remember that? That was yeah. like shocking TV oh, yeah. in 1984. Yes. It's like she just had a fucking lizard. It was. This was the first time I remember as a kid where the teachers in school and my parents cared about the same thing I did with, with science fiction. It seemed like anything else were like, yeah, whatever. But that they really cared about. Almost like The Walking Dead, I'd say, nowadays right. where – the average person not into horror, all the, like they just like The Walking Dead, and that's how V was when we were kids. I don't know what your experience was, but the teachers would talk about it in school with us. I remember. I don't remember that, but uh, but I remember. I remember my my mom loved it. Probably Mark Singer. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> He's got blue on blue eyes, like blue on you know blue on white eyes. The tall Mark Hamill, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was he was the good looking tall Mark Hamill. <laughs> Gary, let's go to the number fives. What do you got for number five? Number five from nineteen eighty four. From Hasbro, Zartan. Gary, let, let's just make this easy on each other. You want me to just take it out of the box at this point? No, no, we'll take no. it out of the box, but I'm going to, we're going to make this quicker. I'm going to double up because it's on my list. I'm going to throw it at five. You know, the color changing feature when you put them in the sun. Mention, so I'm sorry to cut you off, but yeah, this, but this was. This is not mine, right? Did I, did I sell you a Zartan? <laughs> I have three Zartans. That was the first one I pulled out of the okay. box. Well, I'm only saying because this, this made my list because this was mind blowing. Oh yeah. I remember when. Now, this is one of those few figures for me that I do have an early childhood memory of. I was in kindergarten, and I was at lunch, and this boy named Ray- Raymond Osborne, he had Destro and Zartan. And Zartan was just mind-blowing. That It's like, watch, I'll take him out. And then he turns blue. And then the stickers underneath his chest and legs turn blue. It was just like, oh, my God, this is the coolest thing ever. 
I should have known he was going to be on your list because you asked me the question about the skier. Well, we, yeah, that was one of the things we had. We decided early on was well, the main for that's why he's also said the main attraction had to be the action figure. Yeah, you know, because otherwise Keel Hall would win because Keel had the best accessory. Keel Hall. Oh, you're oh, oh you're you're getting the flag and accessory. Yeah, the small the, accessory. The, the flag, just a little, just a little accessory. This is the way I look at Sartan, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. He's a deluxe action figure. He came with a that, small vehicle. That's what I was going to say. Was, was He's an action figure that came with a vehicle, whereas opposed to, you know, the Wolverine came with, uh, what was her name? There you go. And that changed colors girl. also. Didn't this changed the, colors uh, also. Yeah. Yes, that changes color also. Um, you know, on the secondary market, these things will be commonly stained brown because the color change feature is worn out. Gary, nerd out for a second. So <laughs> the idea of Zartan in the comics and the cartoon is that he's a the leader Master of the Dreadnoughts. Yeah, well, leader of the Dreadnoughts, but more or less master of disguise, mercenary, you know, biker gang leader, which was after the Dreadnoughts were introduced the next year. But he's more than that. In the comics, he's he was the apprentice swordsmith to Anahashi, who is the sword provider to the Arashikage clan. Right. Because everything comes back to Snake Eyes and right. G.I. Joe. Well, he's, the coolest, hero. he's the coolest fucking character. But the figure itself, like you said, the color changing aspect of it. Yeah, I'm five years old. I'm going to the store and I'm going to beg my mom to spend the extra money for this deluxe action figure because it's so cool. And it comes with, you know, the little skier. I mean, this thing is, it's everything that five-year-old Gary wants off the shelf. And did, uh, I'm trying to remember now, he changed in the sun, but would he change if you froze him or no? Or put him in like the, I remember trying that and it didn't work, I think. Not to plug the new G.I. Joe classified Sartan, but that one changes in the. Freezer. Oh, does it really? Yeah. It works really well. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> All right. Um, he's in my honorable mentions. He One of the, uh, one of my favorites when I was a kid, and I liked the mask that you could put on him. And then uh, I like the file card that he's a ventriloquist. Oh. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's in there. Holy Christ. Did you you knew something he didn't remember? Well, it's, I didn't bring the file cards <laughs> with me. I'm sorry, <laughs> John. You, you got a goddamn moving box over there filled with shit. All right. All right, Zartan is my number five as well. Uh, it blew my mind. Yeah, he's... Right. It blew my mind. It, it, like, I remember putting it in the sun and going... I mean, that was one I would bring outside. And then the mask was like, holy fuck, this guy. He's got one mask. It's like of a bearded guy. <laughs> they could have done more. Yeah, he's like, uh, what? The mask makes him look like uh, uh, Turkish Jesus. Well, what I never understood about that mask was why didn't they make like one or two masks and make it look like other J, like J. Joe's? They did later on, like the, okay. the newer figures that came out, but back then it was just this generic like, character. Gen- yeah, generic uh, Turkish Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anton LaVey, the yes. Satan, the fucking, the Satan fucking uh, diaries. All right, John, you're number uh, five. It's another, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I have, uh, you know. John, so you're, you came up with the list. There is no cheating. Okay. You're the list master there, for yeah, this episode. Like this, like you with Zartan. It came with the accessory, so that uh, this is um, a two pack of figures. Fair. Uh, the Road Warriors. Uh, <gasps> oh, uh, Hawk and Animal. Yes. Oh. The, okay, calm down. Gary's a big Mad Max guy. No, yeah, they didn't make any back then. Yeah, they were later. They, yeah, they made knockoffs. Do you remember Steel Monsters? Did you ever see that? No. Okay. Yeah, Tonka. <laughs> yes. Jesus but uh, yeah, from 1985 uh, by Remco. I love them. As a kid, they were probably the biggest, even in our area in Connecticut. Everybody loved WWF, but they're the one tag team people who didn't watch AWA or NWA would say, okay, I like those guys. Right. Yeah, those guys transcended. And uh, they're all muscular, and they actually look like the Road Warriors. They use the same mold. They're like a knockoff of uh, Masters of Universe, the Remco uh, mold. Similar, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, so these weren't like, body. So these weren't like the LJN, which was like a solid rubber block. No, these no. Were, these were actually had articulation. Did you, did you ever see the um, the Warlord figures by Remco or the Warrior Beasts? I'm familiar with them, of, yeah. They're like Hemian knockoffs, the same. I, I remember. I think I had Warlord yeah. as a kid, yeah. Yeah, so those same War- same bodies. They reused some of them. Warlord was a DC comic. He looked like muscular Kenny Rogers. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Lady. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, those are great figures. But are they dolls? They came with the cloth. Like, they're supposed to be a biker, like, leather chaps. Right. So it came with that. Uh, I was going to say uh, one of uh, John's favorite wrestlers, another two-pack with Larry Zabisco. That's one of John's favorite wrestlers with and Ric Flair. Yeah. Well, Larry the, the 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 last name alone, Zabisco. But he wasn't that muscular, so I, I couldn't put him on the he list. He wasn't that muscular. Larry Zabisco was like like your fucking eighth-grade woodshop teacher. <laughs> 
who happened to be a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, so he wasn't jacked up, so I, I couldn't put him on the list. That's where the Road Warriors actually look like the Road Warriors, so they... And and was this now this Remco line you're talking about? Was this from when they were in the NWA or WCW or whatever it was it called? It was technically I, I heard an interview with uh, Greg Gagne, whose father owned the AWA. Vern Gagne. I was yes. I used to be a wrestling yes. guy, not anymore. Yeah, but uh, he said these are the first ones to hit the market, or the AWA ones okay. by Remco. That's cool. All right, Gary, you ready for number four? Number four already. Wow. Yeah. Well, we we, we doubled up. We yeah, I know, right? We, but anyway. we DP'd that number five. I'm going to go to 1986. Oh, yeah. This is one that you did have, John. The Cobra Bat. B period A period T. Can I guess? Because I, I, I'm going to go try. Go ahead. Battle. Android. Trooper. Damn straight. Hell, yeah. These. This did not make my list. This should have. And uh, what did I get you for Christmas a couple years ago? Come on. Yeah, you got me a commission from Rich Smith of the Cobra Battle Android Trooper. Is absolutely awesome. It's hanging on my wall. You should uh, go check out the Rich Smith Robot. I think you can find him on Instagram. Great artist. He does things very um, cartoony, right? Is that how you would... Uh, yeah, I'd say cartoonishly um, stylized, yeah. um, exaggerated. But I, I wanted to get Gary something for Christmas, and I wanted to get him a commission. And I didn't want... The opposite of what I said before, I didn't want to get him Snake Eyes. I didn't want to get him Duke or Scarlet or the ones, you know, that are like the, the, the top picks. So I said... What's a cool looking jet? Boom, the fucking Cobra Bat. Cobra Bat. The Cobra Bat, if you look at it, is essentially G.I. Joe's version of Trap Jaw. <laughs> He's got the arm that comes off. You got a flamethrower or like a vibrator or a laser. I don't know what that is. Uh, a claw arm, a regular hand. He's got a backpack that holds it all. He's got that like fucking hologram. Yeah, the lenticular chest. Lenticular chest. And, uh, and I. For target I, practice. We'll get to it again at the end. I listened to your podcast, uh, part of the Pine Comics family. Uh, Chaplin's assistant, uh, motor podcast, by the way. And uh, you said, did you say they're coming out with one of these in classified? Uh, two of them. Because oh, I will fucking buy the fuck out of these. <laughs> I've only bought a few of those. <laughs> they're pre-ordering cases on some websites. Well, uh, if hopefully I could run into them because that's one I want. It is. It um. They have the. I know you're at Target a lot. They do have the Target exclusive Python Patrol bat. And then they also have the regular release, which is coming soon. Yeah, but I mean, I listen to your show and I pay enough attention to like Twitter and my other friends that are toy people. These Target exclusives are a joke, right? <laughs> not, not anymore. Now that now it seems like they've or, they've ordered so much, they're starting to turn into I hate saying it, peg warmers, because people are buying the buying what they need. But the Cobra Bat is going to be hard to because it's an army builder. Well, and I have you see a Cobra Bat in the wild? Uh, yeah, Text it up, buddy. <laughs> I'll Venmo you some cashish. And we'll do this together because I want that fucking figure. Oh yeah, that go no problem. You know I'm hunting for random stuff. John, you you said you're a J.J. Joe fan to an extent. Mm -hmm. Do you buy? Have you bought any of the classified stuff? I don't buy any new toys. Very rarely at all. Toy. I oh, try okay. not to here and there. Uh, a couple of NECA figures here and there, but I try because it's it's a <clears throat> it'll never end. Right. You know, I stopped collecting like new Star Wars figures 20 years ago because it never ends. Right. And I, Phantom Menace. Yeah. We've already determined that like yeah. your wife is like divorce is happening. Yeah. If you keep no, <laughs> just fuck her out. No, yeah. that's my wife. That's not his wife. His wife is cool. Yeah. I, 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 know, come, I get yelled at. Trust me. I come home with the toys. I put them in my, in my comic room every time I buy yeah. a toy and I realize I have nowhere to display them yes. anymore. So I just have this pile of boxes. That's that what looks I have. Like That's shit. what I get yelled at. Yeah. Just, Why don't you set it up? I'm like, it takes time. Yeah. Like, yeah, I have like some of it set up, but not everything. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. So that's your number five. That's four. Number. number four. 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 All right. My number four. Uh, let's see. Mattel, 1984, 1985. Jim Shooter of Marvel came up with an idea for a comic book series that Mattel Mattel wanted to compete with the um, the DC uh, superpowers line. So Jim Shooter and Mattel worked together and said, we're going to come up with a series and then we're going to make figures based on this series. And they used two words that they said were trending with like eight-year-old boys at the time. <laughs> Secret. Okay. I, I don't know why that trended with eight-year-old boys unless they're talking about like their, yeah, their little dirty mags under the, uh, you know, they keep underneath the, uh, the mattress. And wars, because what eight-year-old kid isn't thinking about war? You know what I mean? Like, you know, everything's cops and robbers. Secret Wars. I picked, because this is the one I remember playing with the most, Wolverine, because I love Wolverine. Uh, he had the brown costume, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Not the, the yellow, blue one. Yep. And there's a variant. Did you know that? The silver claws and yes, black claws? Yes, I had the silver claw. When I was thinking of the nostalgia part of this again, 
They all came with a shield with a lenticular... That nobody played with. Or nobody, except no, no, for Captain America, the rest you just threw out. Because none of them had shields. Yes. Captain America is the only one that carries a shield. But the thing that I remember about this figure the most was um, the claws snapped over the wrist. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why, but that's just always ingrained in my head. Uh, so that's it. That's it for me. Secret Wars. You guys, did either of you guys, uh, John? Had, yep. You had some of these? I, I, I had almost all of them. I just didn't get Hobgoblin. It was the only one I Right. Had. They had Hobgoblin. And yeah. there's four in ones. Did you ever see they made uh, Iceman, Constrictor, and Electro? They're like foreign exclusive. When I was doing the research on uh, what year this was, I read that there was four that never came out in America. Who was again? Iceman, Hob- Iceman, who else? No, it's uh, Iceman. I'm trying to think. Electro, Constrictor. Is that it? That's all I could think of off the top of my head. Let's make up one. Gary, who do you think would be a figure that wouldn't sell in America? Puck from Alpha Flight? Okay. <laughs> no, all right, no. fair. Sasquatch. <laughs> You're only getting half of your fucking your money because he's only a fucking <laughs> two-inch figure instead of uh, four. Uh, Gary, did you ever get into these or no? No, I really didn't get into Marvel action figures until my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> fair. Uh, all right, John, what is your number? What are we on? Four? Four. 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 I loved this figure as a kid, and it got very popular now with collectors over the past maybe four or five years. Uh, the Kraken from Clash of the Titans. Oh, yeah, yeah. from 1980. Uh, it's huge. It's probably, I don't know how tall is it, 14, 14 inches tall maybe. It has the flippers. It has a tail that's articulated. Uh, it's yeah. got the arms that are articulated. Yeah, I don't think I, I, don't think I had any of the Clash of the I, I saw Clash of the Titans in uh, at the drive-in with my parents. And I loved it as a kid, but I don't know if I had any of the figures. There's only a few. There's only, what, four figures, Pegasus, and the Kraken. I, okay. I think that's it. And do you have, again, do you have this uh, the now? Kraken, yes. You have the Kraken. Yeah. Kraken, nice. <laughs> yeah. In the box. No, I don't have it in the box, though, because I did have it years ago. Then I sold it, and then someone I know bought a collection, had the Kraken. I said, I'll buy it from you. And then he's like, eh. $2,000 later. No, you then I'm like, no, but then I, I bought it from him. I said, well, let's come up with a price. And then he's like, okay, how about this? And I'm like, okay. And then after I left his house, he's like, hey, I left on eBay. These go for more money. I'm like, okay. And he sent me screenshots. I said, did you see these ones where they went for less? No. I'm like, okay, well, you do an average, and this is what the price is. Right. <laughs> Fucking jerk off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast, yes. guy. <laughs> yeah. Wait, didn't you say it was a friend of yours? Well, you know, he's... Why don't uh, you say acquaintance? Acquaintance is a, a better, yeah, better yeah. term. Doesn't sound like a good friend. No, no, because... I'll be honest, though. After after I sold my uh, stuff to Gary, like two months later, I was like, you know what? I think those are worth a lot more. And I started, like, fucking hammering on them, so... <laughs> they started hammering on me. I remember when I bought them for, for the, your action figures, I provided him a handwritten spreadsheet of... He, he what, did, and I was... I'm like, this is what they're currently worth. This is what I'm, I have to spend... I literally, I literally, we, we agreed on it. And I said, I trust you that if you know that like one of these figures is worth, like I could buy my house out with it, please don't fuck me over. I trust Gary. Yeah. And then like we go to do the, the, the transaction. He's like, oh, I've got a couple of notepads here. And he's like showing me like fucking spreadsheet. I'm like, dude, just give me the fucking money. Yeah. I just want to make sure that you understand that I'm offering you fair market value on your lot. Yeah. So this storm shadow here is a little bit faded. Uh, in perfect condition, he'd be about uh, seventy dollars. But uh, I'm, I'm willing to give you a, like just go, just fucking take it. <laughs> it wasn't even worth that when I bought him from you. No. It's that long ago. No, I know. All right, so the crack and who made and who made this again? Uh, Mattel. Uh, the packaging's better than the figures. The, the painted uh, cards. There's Calibus, Perseus, Thalo. Calibus is the and is, uh, is, Charon the. The boat rider, the the skeleton looks like a grim reaper. Calibus is the uh, is the, the fucking devil looking guy. Is the fucking the goat that wears the blue like yes. uh, singlet? Yeah, mm-hmm. scared the fuck out of me oh, as a yeah. kid. Scared the fuck yeah. out of me as a kid. He did, he did. No, but then you got Harry Hamlin, who's so good looking that you forget that you're looking at the devil <laughs> himself. All right, number three, Gary. Number three is probably going to be the newest action figure on anybody's list. I'm willing to bet. Well, it better be pre 1990, or you're getting kicked <laughs> the fuck out. <laughs> well, I do like staying here, so it's from 1988. It is the Target exclusive hit and run from GI Joe uh, Hasbro. So this is this is past my time. Is this this no Law and Order is the the dog and the the guy right? Yeah, Law and Order is the dog and the guy. Oh, but okay. this guy is the little green army man. He was the infantry soldier. He came with a repelling rope. But because the Target exclusive had one additional feature, which put him over the top, was remember that GI Joe had the mail away backpack with the parachute and you yeah. throw him off the roof of your house or apartment complex, and he would float to the ground. Well, the Target exclusive came with that for 
I don't know, whatever additional charge. Hey, look, I know these <laughs> lists are all very personal, Gary. Yeah. But for a number three? Number three, no, it's no the the parachute puts them over the top. I say I love you, but what what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> That came with a duffel bag and a Bowie knife, that, man. That figure is like, you, you put that under the bat. Yeah, damn straight. He's a better toy. I'd rather have a hit and run than a Snake Eyes. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> no, as a toy? I'm t- I told you, I'm taking the media out of it. Hit and run has such wasted potential. He's he's all one color. He's all green. With yeah, a little he's, bit. It's called camouflage. That's what they do in the army. I don't know. He's fucking stupid. <laughs> when they shoot the enemy, they're camouflaged. Don't they don't want to get shot. I don't apologize to all the listeners that have to hear Gary's fucking poor choice for number three. No, I'm just fucking <laughs> with you, Gary. All right. My number three. Let's see here. I got to look through my stuff here. It's Wolverine from Toy Biz. No. Th- now, he, we, we've talked about this before. This is a toy line that, uh, and it's Mego as well. Okay. I know this one's Mego. And it was, it, this was actually right before they went out. You're going to know where I'm going with this. As a big G.I. Joe fan, this was the toy line that I was into right before G.I. Okay. Joe. But here's the nostalgia bit of it. Somehow or another in my life, even though I had a lot of these, wiped out of my memory. Let's go back to about eight years ago, Boston Com- uh, Boston Comic Con. I was there for the day. Lou probably, maybe, I don't know, Lou. We're walking around and we come to a toy vendor. And on his uh, little, you know, his little display, he's got like four in the package Eagle Force figures from Mego. And you ever have a moment in your life where you're like, you you fucking almost get bowled over <laughs> by something? Yes. I literally almost like fucking fell to my knees because every member, they're gone. They were gone out of my mind. They are, how big are they? Two, I think I wrote they're down tiny, here. They're tiny, a metal. They're two and three quarter inch die cast uh, figures. Ideal took over from Mego and changed the name to Strike Force at some point. I didn't know that. I know Strike Force is uh, Tito Santana and Rick Martel. <laughs> That's a wrestling uh, little wrestling joke for you. Uh, the one I picked was Captain Eagle. He's the leader. Mm-hmm. And the reason I picked him, in all honesty, was, you know, and I, I, I'm doing this list. I looked back at all the line, right? And who were the bad guys they went against? Uh, it was like Baron you know, von Chill. Right. It was like, yeah, it was it was almost like Cobra, right? But yeah. But the reason was when I looked at it, the one I remember having and the accessory that rings a bell in my head the most was Captain Eagle, because he had this giant fucking he's two and three quarter inches, and the Eagle accessory has got to be an inch and a half. It's just okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It sits on his arm and it's giant. And I picked it because it it, it, it was it was probably what got me into that military toy idea okay. besides little plastic green men that's where we all start as boys right i mean mm-hmm. that's just true um but yeah fucking the eagle force was this right before gi joe 2 was right it like right before like literally like right i think when Mego went under and then these things kind of disappeared mm-hmm. i probably probably the next fucking month or two mm-hmm. you know someone for christmas got me a gi joe figure however it started but but eagle force and right they're back right yeah they're back uh I want to say fresh. I don't want to. I don't want to sound ignorant, but I want to say fresh monkey. Fin, fresh monkey fiction. I think is doing it. And they're three and three quarter now, right? Plastic. Yes, I know they're three and three quarter now. Plastic. Um, in the same vein of vintage GI Joe. Right. They're expensive. Oh, right, Joe. Yeah. I know they're like thirty dollars each because I saw them and I'm like, yeah, I'm not buying them. Were, you, were did you have these as a kid? Oh yeah, I, I had yeah most of them as a kid. Yeah. I, I'm thinking of one of the the villains is General Mamba. Is that the, one of the guys you're thinking? Yes, of? He's General- like a, like a big guy with like the military. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, he, he, I think he like Idi Amin, right? Like they. Yes. Yeah. And then there's the shock troopers. Yep. That, and those, I used to pretend they were V guys before V came out with the doll. Right. I used to. You know what I'm talking about? They had they had sunglasses. Oh, I do. Yeah. And yeah. and they also like if I remember correctly, there was there was. Uh, movement, but like very little range of yeah, movement. Probably yeah, probably five points of articulation. Yeah, like say. up and down, up and down, head. Yeah, and you could pop the heads off too. Oh, I don't remember that. Yes. <laughs> I, I, for me though, when we talk about the nostalgia factor, yeah. going to that Boston Comic Con, I still remember the moment. I remember going and and the um the cards were very comic book stylized, mm-hmm. like like uh, art, which GI Joe also did, as you said. Well, GI Joe is more painterly, more painterly. But I'm saying like the, like yeah the the but yeah, Eagle Force is more line art, like uh, like let's say a DC uh, Big Five Army right uh, style book. Yeah, it, it, it just Eagle it's still Force still pretty cool. I mean, they're 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 pretty cool. They just can't for me. They came out before my time, right? But they're they're a solid toy. But they just got wiped off the map. No, as as you are as a toy uh, hunter, essentially, have you ever come across these or never? No? 
I can honestly say when I go to the toy shows and stuff, I never see Eagle Force. And I think I may have seen one at a Terrificon a couple of years ago, but that's that's probably it. I haven't seen like a lot of these other than if, you know, go online, you can buy anything. But, right. But in person, I, I don't think I've ever really seen or held. I know I haven't held one in person. When you when you just said go online, you can buy anything, you winked at me. What, what, what is that all about? Are you... Was that? Are you endorsing the black web, Gary? You know, we're talking toys. All right. I just want to make sure you weren't going to try to sell me a baby or crack or something. John, what would be your number? At, where are we at? Three? Three. Um, what we were talking about earlier, uh, Boba Fett from Kenner, 1979, just because I love the figure. It was one of my favorite Star Wars figures as a kid, and the whole mythology of the figure, how it was a mail-away figure. Everyone you know, thought they were going to get the the rocket firing action, but you didn't, you came right. with a note saying I was canceled or, you know, I forgot what the, uh, the whole line was. Sorry, kid, you're going to shoot your eye out. Yeah. So the whole spiel it gives you. And I remember a friend of mine and I didn't understand as a kid, if you look at the back of the package, if you remember, it shows it's artwork of a kid pressing the button. Yeah. And I didn't realize that was artwork. I thought that was the actual figure. Then they had like a prototype of a kit bashed figure. Again, I thought that was the real figure. I didn't, comprehend what prototypes were as a kid so a friend of mine said he got it in the mail I'm like this isn't it the same figure i got this doesn't look like the one in the back of the package so why doesn't the the missile come out he's like oh and he told me it came with a note my mother said that it, uh, they change it and it doesn't it doesn't have a missile now i thought he was lying for years until he became an adult I'm like oh he was telling the truth this whole time yep <laughs> and did yours have the J or the L? oh no yes oh, there's still people that say oh i got one in the mail i said really okay sure yeah yeah, the, you know about the J and the L. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. For the, Explain to the listeners out there. That's the style of hook for when you flip it over to launch the missile now here, into yeah. your throat and choke to die. <laughs> to, kill, to kill some poor neighborhood kid. Now, do you have this still? No. I, well, no, I mean, I've, I have a, a regular, not a, a regular Boba Fett. Right. Because, like, the, the last one sold for, like, $150,000 or something, the prototypes of the, I don't know. I don't know what you do for a living, John. You know, maybe... Maybe that's one of the things. Maybe you're like, yes, I bought one on eBay last no, year. It was two hundred thousand dollars. No, no. no, no. All right. Yeah. There. Yeah. There, there's what? There's like eight or ten. There's in a, there's a there's a decent amount actually. There's actually there's a bunch. I saw a video online a couple of years ago of a guy. I don't I don't know who the guy was, but he must have been like either an MMA fighter at some point. But he owns. Oh, who bought? I know you're talking. Who owned Tap Out? Who he owned uh, Tap Out. Yes. The you know the MMA yeah. uh, equipment you know a clothing supplier, and it, it was a video of him going to New York Comic Con and mm-hmm. buying one. And whatever it was, is $100,000. Yeah. It's amazing to watch this guy, 35-year-old guy, like, you know, I think it was on Toy, uh, Toy I, Hunter. I was on Toy Hunter in episode two. Just oh, were you really? Yes. Toy Hunter with Jordan. Uh... Jordan Hembro. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm going to have to go back and check that out again. Chiller Time. It's Chiller Time is the episode. All right. Check John out on It's Chiller Time. Uh, yeah. Do you ever watch, you ever watch Toy Hunter? No, actually, no. Only lasted like one season. I liked it. Yeah. Well, it didn't last long. Now he works for Disney now, Jordan. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it was just amazing to watch like this guy buy this figure because he's milling it over, you know, like you're milling over if you can get the six inch or the 12 inch at Subway like me. <laughs> yeah. He bought a lot of stuff. That guy, I think he sold everything after a few years. Oh, really? Yeah. That guy. Oh. Because he bought some Mego stuff, some high-end Mego superhero figures, too, and I think he sold all that. The Brazilian Wonder Woman? Is that is that right in that? There's a Brazilian the Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman Brazilian? What? Yeah, no, there's there's a, there's, <laughs> there's a Mego Wonder Woman figure from another country that's, like, worth a lot of money. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, look, I, I out-nerded you two fucking nerds. <laughs> all right, Gary, what's your number two? Number two from Hasbro, 1985, but actually originally released in 1982 from Takatoko Toys in Japan. Oh, I know who this is going to be. <laughs> Taco Toko Toys went bankrupt in 1984 and sold to Bandai. And Bandai licensed these to- this figure to Hasbro and actually prevented a n- Matchbox from, from making their own transforming toy, Jetfire, from Transformers. Oh, wow. That's right. I never had that one. Now, this one, this one I, I am going to do a little bit of a cheat. I was a huge fan of Robotech as a kid. He, yeah, he looks like a, what was it? A, a Valk, well, a Veritech fighter. Veritech fighter, yeah. Yeah, but in Macross, it was called a Valkyrie. What do you want? Do you want a Valkyrie or do you want a Veritech? I want a fucking Valkyrie. You dude. said that with such venom. <laughs> no, I mean, come on. A Veritech fighter. <laughs> yeah, well, come on. A Veritech fighter sucks. That name sucks. I think that sounds pretty fucking cool. Well, it sounds very 80s for America. I, I, wa- I watch, when I watch Robotech, when, you know, I'm not a huge Robotech fan, Robotech fan but when I did watch it, it was... It was the American, you know, mm-hmm. version that we saw on on uh, 
Channel 20 after school, so. Yeah, no, it was cool. I have a, I, I loved Robotech as a kid. I did love Transformers as a kid. I hunted for this Jetfire for like 20 years. The first time I bought it, it never came in the mail. I bought it on eBay for like 60 bucks. This is like 2001. It might have been John's friend. <laughs> okay, <guy> fucks everybody. <laughs> but I sent in, this is how long ago on eBay was. I sent in the money order. Oh, okay. I mailed the money order. And then I never got back and I never got my money back. It was my first time buying anything on eBay and I got fucked. <laughs> and I, I, lo- I went and I spent 20 years looking for the right one. I know so little about this character. And so, cause you know, again, like as a, Joe. As, as a transformer, he's, he didn't really make a, a real big impact until later on, like current modern day. When Is he a like, Decepticon or an Autobot? Well, he started out as a Decepticon. But then in the lore, he became an Autobot when he was like, well, Megatron's really bad. But he was a scientist. And the Decepticons were like, science is great. We should totally do science for it's good for uh, Cybertron. And then, and then you know, quote, unquote, defected to the Autobots. Okay. All right. I Honestly, not one I ever had. And you said, what year was it? Uh, 1985. Wow. And I, I was a collector in 85. It's the, out of my memory. Oh, well. I Transformers can see- were an expensive toy. I didn't have a lot of Transformers as a kid. I, did. I didn't have this guy as a kid. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, I actually did. It's weird. John, did you have Jeff Fire? I wasn't big into Transformers. No. No, they bored me. Oh. They, it was a Transform, you know, make him a robot, make him a car, make him whatever. And it's like, all right, you can't actually fight with them. Yeah. Like I, normal figures. So I got bored. I could just shoot with lasers. I'm like, this got old yeah. quick. Yeah. Like, well, the reason why I got Jeff Fire so high, he, from the 1980s line, he's the most poseable. Okay. So after he transforms, he has moving hips, moving mm-hmm. knees, moving elbows, moving shoulders, moving neck. He's not just a transforming brick. Yeah. Right. I see one of my favorite features of that era, Transformers on his head, that color change sticker. Or or yeah. because you they had those stickers where you had to, to find out their allegiance, you had to put your thumb on it. And it yeah, because either... the big red Autobot sticker on the nose cone totally I know, doesn't but, give it away. But, I, but that's from when I was a kid. I remember those fondly. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah. All um, right. Number two. That's one, one question, yeah. Gary. Yeah. Are the fists hard to get? Is that the hard accessory to get? And they remove the fists or no? No, the fists. Okay. Th- actually, I tried to transform it before I brought it in here just because it's a little more, uh, less fragile. I couldn't actually push the fists in, so I left him in robot mode. Okay. But the hard part on Jetfire is he has this gun clip that goes to his right shoulder or right elbow. Yeah. And that, that piece is the one that everybody loses and it's like a, you know, you got to find it. But Jetfire as a toy, like if you're ever looking and hunting for one, I bought this from a local guy in, North Haven, he's, you know, he's hard to find complete, but if you have to piece one together, it's an absolute motherfucker to do it. But it's cool because for me, I, Robotech was my gateway into anime and I really grew a fondness for the Macro series from Japan. And I was like, okay, what can I, what, is there something that I can do that to represent it? And the closest thing I could find was Jetfire because he's literally a Macro toy from Japan, right. just imported in the United States. All right. So he gets bonus points, and that's why he's number two. <laughs> number two. N- numero dos. All right, my number two, now that Gary's done jizzing all over Jetfire. He's extra white now. <laughs> he's, he's got an extra layer there. Uh, all right, another. it's Transformer. All right, G1, uh, Hasbro. Coolest voice of any Transformer. Who am I talking about right off the bat? Coolest voice in the cartoon of any Transformer. Two people, I could think of. All right, th- give, me, give me one. Starscream and... Uh, Sound wave. I love both of them, and both of them were in contention. Optimus Prime. <laughs> no. No, no, it's one of those two. Eject. Soundwave. Soundwave. Soundwave was such a fucking cool figure when I was a kid. He is he's very 80s. Like he does not translate at all into our time now. He's a giant robot that turns to a boombox, which is an entirely 80s concept. But he came with the with the uh with the tapes that were the different, uh, his little minions, Rumble and, uh, <laughs> the, and the Rumble, Frenzy, Laserbeak. <laughs> Laserbeak and Ravage. Ra- Ravage. And there was another one, uh, not Laserbeak. Uh, like Laserbeak, he came with, oh, God, blanking on the name. He didn't come with Laserbeak. He Frenzy. Came, he came with Frenzy? It's, uh, well, what I wrote here, and I, I can't tell you, I had it in 84. I can't tell you what mine came with. It says Rumble, Laserbeak, or Frenzy. So, but I, Ravage was one of them too, right? Yeah, Ravage was one of them. I, some of those cassettes were sold separately. I right. know he came with one or two. I can't, but I know there's a sister like uh, Frenzy and Rumble are the same mold, just re- recolors, right? But they, there's, they another, both, there's another. They one. both had the the like the earthquake fists, right? Yes. Yeah, and then Ravage was a, a panther, right? Essentially, 
and uh, and and Laserbeak was a fucking pterodactyl or yeah. a bird, bird pterodactyl. Just a dope ass fucking figure. Shoulder cannon, purple, essentially bluish purple. And if you like the cartoon, again, he had that robotic. I can't do it. <laughs> you know, uh, eject, eject, operation, rumble. He would, and then he would just blast those guys out of his fucking chest. Uh, one of the coolest moments in the Bumblebee movie of a couple years ago was when he fucking showed up for like that one moment. I was like, oh my god, it's fucking Soundwave. Um, just really cool, you know. Again, does not translate to today. Like if they have, I know they do have current uh, Transformers um, lines. I, I would wonder what he transforms to now because it, what would it, like, I know he came out in the two thousands as a CD player. Okay, I was gonna say he must be an iPod now or something. Yeah, he'd be an a, <laughs> yeah he'd be a he'd be a Bluetooth speaker. He's a Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> yeah, searching for Wi Fi. <laughs> well, let me see. Hold on one second. Operation Network Connect. Rumble, 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 rumble. Frenzy, frenzy, EJ. So he would basically sound like this when he would say something. (laughs) Rumble, frenzy. That's terrible. I don't play with this that much, but (laughs) you get the idea. You like that echo, Gary? That was great. There's going to be a lot of editing around that little bit. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> All right, John, now that I fucked everything up at number two, <laughs> who's your number two? Okay, this is a figure that wasn't sold in the United States, and I found out about it when I was 16. I started collecting stuff and blew my mind that they made this. I didn't know that they came out with Moonraker figures from the James Bond. Oh, okay. Uh, 12 inch, 12 and a half inch. Mego figures, um, and this particular figure was not sold in the United States. It was Jaws. Richard Keel, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, they used like, the Hulk upper torso to make him big, and his mouth was a magnet. The same, if you remember the uh, Batman and Robin with magnetic hands, the same type of magnet, that was his mouth, the magnet. I feel like I've seen this before, maybe yeah. at a show or something. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so that, just for the, I always loved that figure, and... It's still, even though I don't have memories as a kid, as a collector, blew my mind seeing this. Are you a big Bond fan? I uh, Certain films. Like, the new stuff, I care less about new Bond. Okay. You're, you're more of, like, a Connery guy? No, I, 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 like Roger, I like Connery. I like Roger Moore. Okay. I mean, everything up to Pierce Brosnan after that, I just... Whenever I think of, like, uh, of, of that era, Roger Moore and yeah. Jaws... Yeah. I always just remember him eating that fucking cable. Oh, the cable. cable. The yeah, cable. I love that. I love He's that. He's fucking, Arr! and the cable's yes. fucking splintering around. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I bought the movie still of that years ago just because I thought it was phenomenal. I used to hang it up on my wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, he, was that Moonraker where he falls in love? Wh- which girl? Well, 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 do you know what that's? No, um, Jaw, Jaws falls oh, in love. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, with the blonde girl with the pigtails. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, do you remember Bond, the girl he fell in love with, Holly? Do you remember her last name? No. Goodhead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they made the Holly doll, but they only said Holly on the package yeah. for some reason. What I, don't, the, I don't know why. What did the pussy galore doll say? <laughs> galore. <laughs> it's just galore. It's your first name. I can't say that out loud. So this is an action figure. Blank I, Willow. You ready, Gary, for your number one? Ready for number one? Are you ready for number I'm one? I'm excited because I have no idea what you're going to pull out. Yeah, with hit and run number three, what can I top with hit and run? Fucking Christ, man. You really blew it on that one. <laughs> Storm Shadow, 1984, yeah. G.I. Joe. How can you compete with the original ninja? He's not the original ninja, but he he's he's perfect. He's the ninja in white. His backpack holds all of his gear, so he is free to kill ha- with just his bare hands. And then you can pop the bow in, the swords, the nunchaku. You know what I love about this figure is, you know, obviously it's a you know it's all just one molded plastic, and he's got the uh, like the bandolier belt. But then they also have, like, the fake little star hanging yeah. out of the belt and uh, the, the sigh or whatever that is, like, sticking down the front. Yeah, it's it's tr- it's a mold that is very popular, and it's just – it's such a cool figure. It It is – it's G.I. Joe. It is Ninja. It is everything for me, 1980s action figure. He, you know, he has the, you know, the, the hands that all the G.I. Joe shared, so – you know, he wants to shoot a newsie, he can shoot a newsie. He can do anything he wants in the G.I. Joe world. And he's a badass motherfucking ninja. Now, they they brought him about, obviously, um, to kind of, you know, we, we know the story. 
the the uh, the Sword Brothers, essentially, right? Whatever you want to call them, him and Snake Eyes are are part of the same clan. Uh, we learned that eventually. Fuck, I couldn't get that out at all. <laughs> Was there ever anything said about the idea of of dressing the good guy in black and the bad guy in white? I know Snake Eyes came first. Well, I think it's it's a, it's a response to that yeah. because Snake Eyes did come first in black. And they created him in white. But also don't forget, too, Hasbro wasn't reading the comic books too closely. They were more concerned about their toyetic uh, toy tie-in issues, much less they weren't really giving a shit about the lore. So they created him white, this ninja, to capitalize on the ninja craze of the early 80s. And it just ex- and his success exploded. You know, it's what elevated the G.I. Joe line from then on, you know, because then all of a sudden... You know, in 1988, he's a good guy. Yeah, I know. I, I never, I got issues with that. I, I, I like to think of him as either, either. He's an operator. He's an operator, right? You know, and I get that. And I, what I wanted to say before, instead of Sword Brothers was, you know, like, you, you know, when you, you want, you read comics, there's certain words that like, you know, are commonplace in comics that you don't hear like Mjolnir, right? Until you saw the movies, you don't really hear Mjolnir a lot. Arashikage is the name of the clan. And it's something I've read a million times and I never want to say it out loud because yeah. I feel like I'm going to fucking destroy it. <laughs> oh, when I was a kid, I used to always just say Arasha Kaj. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, because it, it looks like that, you know? Yeah. So that's what I wanted to say was they're, they're members of the Arasha Kage clan. Yeah. But I didn't want to sound like a fucking idiot. Yeah, but they're I, sword brothers, but storm shadow originally served in the same long range recon unit as stalker and snake eyes. Yes. And they met in Vietnam. Yep. yep. So it's, you know, and we learned all of that in the comic books, but it's it's absolutely crazy, you know. But in the cartoon, his main adversary was Spirit. Was he really? Yeah, because Snake Eyes didn't talk. How do you write a silent guy? Yeah, yeah, I guess that makes sense. And something else we learned in the comics that we talked about on, Christ, I don't remember what episode it was we did last year during the pandemic when we talked about the um, the G.I. Joe story arc of... Uh, of yeah, the Dr. Venom uh, yeah. plague toxin story arc, yeah. Was that, um, that no matter what... Um, What's his name? The 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 J. Joe Eel Man, Torpedo. Torpedo wears flippers even when he's not in the fucking water. Yeah, he's in Fort Knox. Yeah, he's wearing. <laughs> flippers. He's in Fort Knox. They're, they're they're storming Fort Knox, and they've got him in fucking flippers in the comic book. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. My number one. This is a big cheat, but it's okay because it's my show, and I don't give a fuck. Uh, Rock Lords. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna give you some colors and see if you can figure out what I'm talking about. Ooh, colors. Theater of the mind. Black. Yellow. Blue. Green and red. John, you got this? Five pieces. Black, yellow, blue, green, and red. Is this a costume color? Oh, you're cheating because this is five. It's five. Voltron. Voltron. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Vehicle gotcha, gotcha. Voltron, right? Vehicle Voltron. No, 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 no. I, <laughs> no, no, wait, wait. I had three robots, right? Wasn't that the other? So I had, okay, so I'm talking. there's a car one, too. I'm talking about Lion Voltron. Yes. Um, which is, I think, the second one. Um, I had vehicle Voltron too. I did. I had that. I did not have the three stackable robots. That was the one. Although I, I knew a kid that did. Um, no, I look whether it's cheating or not. It's uh, it, it becomes one figure in true, the end. True. Right. They're not figures otherwise. They're just they're you know they're 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 lions uh, imported by Matchbox. Okay. And maybe my greatest regret toy wise in the last ten years. You and I, uh, we, we share a, a similar comic store. That, that's how we met. And one day I was in there and he was cleaning out his back room. And another guy, uh, Ken, he was there and the proprietor was cleaning out his back room and he pulled out. He goes, oh, there's some collection stuff I had bought a, a long time ago. I never did anything with. And he pulled out used but in box and like barely used Voltron. Oh, my gosh. Still in the Matchbox box with the. You open the front, and it had the the window. They're all in there. And fucking Ken was like, I will buy that right now. Like, I wanted it, and I didn't react fast enough to it. And he was like, and you, you know who I'm talking about, so you know sometimes it can be a little difficult to deal with. Yeah, he would have taken that as a bidding war. No, and he just, he, he said to him, he goes, well, okay, this is what, I don't remember, but it wasn't a lot. Like, it was, I think maybe he didn't know what he had. And Ken gladly bought it. So anyways... Uh, ve- or, um, not vehicle lion. Uh, I had it as a kid. I loved it. I wish I still had it. Uh, the little fists, the heads would fucking fire off the, on the legs. The, uh, the, the panels would open up. It had like little guns, I think. And when I was a kid, I put it in the microwave one time 
<laughs> and I put it in for like 10 seconds, and it was die-cast metal. And it was the oh, coolest boy. fucking thing I've ever seen in my oh, life. Boy. Just lightning bolts everywhere. Wow. Lightning bolts everywhere. So, yeah, it, it, and I love I loved the cartoon. The cartoon's awesome. I've never watched the Netflix version, which I hear is great. I should watch it at some point. I know it's over now. Defender of the Universe, whatever it was called. Uh, but, yeah, Vehicle Voltron. If it's cheating, it's cheating. But it's the coolest fucking toy, the coolest figure. Form Blazing Sword, that's my answer. John, what do you have for your number one? Okay, there's some nostalgia to this, and I love the figure itself. It's the 12-inch Gene Simmons figure from Cast from Amigo. Okay. 1979. You didn't pick. You didn't pick fucking Peter Chris. Come on. Well, uh, here's some trivia. Peter Chris, uh, his head. Do you know what they use for that? The mold. <laughs> no. Lex Luthor. Did they really? Yeah, and rooted hair on it. Jesus Christ. Did you know that, Gary? No, I this, didn't. this is good, useless trivia. And uh, Paul Stanley is uh, the captain from Captain and Tennille. <laughs> they just rooted hair, and you could see the molded hair underneath his, actually, for Paul Stanley. Really? But Gene and Ace had the original head sculpts, and I loved the Gene. Parents wouldn't let me have this as a kid because they thought Kiss were satanic. When I got older, I got a paper out. When I was 16 years old, I went to a Star Trek convention in New Haven, and a guy had one in the box, and he wanted $100 for it. All I had on me was $86. And he said, well, if I have it at the end of the day, I'll sell it to you. Nobody cared about Kiss at that Star Trek invention. So I got it for $86 in the box. Nice. Kiss nice. scared the fuck out of me as a kid. <laughs> well, my parents would tell me, like, when, like, his kiss was big, I was, you know. Little. I was like five, probably yeah. same age, like five years right. old. When and I would, believed everything. When they would come on TV, I would be like, ah, you know, it's fucking kiss. Get me out of here. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's awesome. And was this, you said, Migo, this is a 12 inch? 12, you said? Yeah, 12 and a half inch tall. Did you ever see it or no? I don't think so. It's, he, it's a really, really cool looking figure. It has the boots. And at the time, you know, they didn't have the technology like today, but they had the, the platform boots and they painted on the little demon right. on uh, on his platform boots. He's got real chains on him. And do you have this original one still? Or yes. No? Well, I have a different, I upgrade. I got a better version. You of got a it. better one. Yes. Okay. All right. What does it feel like to have an action figure that's fucked over like 8,000 women? Does that, do you ever, <laughs> you ever get, <laughs> you know, do you ever look at it and go, good for you, yes, buddy? Yeah, <laughs> so you got the tongue sticking out and everything. Your, your, so. action, your action figure has chlamydia. <laughs> It says it right in the box. Now, now with gonorrhea, <laughs> they made uh, they made share too, so I could put them together. There you go. There you go. And they wait. Right, they were together for yeah. a little while. Yeah. Well, of course, he's fucked everybody on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. He probably was with my sister at some point. I don't know. <laughs> all right, all right. That's your number one. It's tough. I could pick a hundred if I want. No, on no, this no. List, that's... but I, I'm really thinking it's still. Like I said, I was. I bought it in 1990. Right. Still to this day, I still love it. It still doesn't because there's some stuff I had and I sold them. Like I got tired of it. This I never got tired of the the, the four Kiss dolls, and that's my favorite of, of them. What's your favorite of the uh, four Kiss solo albums? The Ace Fraley. Okay, because it has New York Groove on it, right? That's easily well, that, well, that's a cover. I mean, that's a good song, but um, I mean, but it's just the best album overall. If you if you listen, to, I mean, have you listened to them all or no? Uh, not in years. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think the only one I ever owned was uh, Ace Frehley because New York Groove. And just the whole album. It's actually a really good album. The Gene one is weird because it wasn't what I expected. I thought it was going to be like heavy as a kid, and it's not. Right. You know, the Peter Chris is a little weird. It's like Bob Seger. The Paul is okay. It's just kind of, I know a lot of people, that's like one of their favorites. I think it's just kind of generic sounding. Right. And some Kiss fans get mad that I say that. I like the, the Peter album better than that. But, you know, that's your our choice. Opinions. That's your choice. That's your opinion. <laughs> yeah, the Kiss Legion, uh, right into pineoncomics at gmail.com. Yeah, really. Got a problem with that. I wasn't the one that said it. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Kiss album is Crazy Night, so no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that'll, that'll, that'll double down on the, uh, on the people being pissed off. John, thank you for coming on. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about shocking things in one second. Um, and I, I just want to point this out that uh, I don't often like guests choose like, like, what we do and i appreciate that you came out with a good idea because uh i like doing this it was fun we haven't oh, done yeah, no, we fun. haven't done a, a toy episode in a long time as a matter of fact i wanted to point this out because i was looking at it today episode six gary episode six you you were on episode six big potato uh, salesman batman was the title and you me and john talked about toys and uh we're at episode 200 and at this point 15 plus and uh you were the first person other than me and john to be on the show that's right yep you're the first technical guest i guess we ever had. yeah and i was the first guest host yeah first guest host as well fedex police that's right that's right with um rod wiggum rod wiggum there we go so gary 
You've got a thing going on. I've talked about it on the show before. I listen to every every episode you put out. Thank you so much. I enjoy the shit out of it. I give you all the credit in the world because I've been podcasting a long time now, and uh, I got to have guys like you here with me. You do this all by yourself. Like I said, I, I really lay it out. That's hard. So tell everybody out there all about our little uh, brother podcast, what it's all about, and uh, where to find you. All right, so my name is Gary, and I host the Chaplain's Assistance Motor Pod, the nerdy little brother podcast of Pina Comics. We may be strange, but we are not. It's strange. You can find us on Anchor.fm, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. It's all about G.I. Joe. It's extra nerdy G.I. Joe. I love G.I. Joe. I could talk about it for days, and that's why I have a podcast now about it, because John and my schedules don't mesh up all that often. Yeah, it's, it's a little rough. Uh, I always recommend it to people, but I always do let it, let them know before they throw it on and then get back to me and get mad. It is very specific. So if you're not a G.I. Joe fan, I'm not saying don't listen to Gary show, but you're going to have to listen to some G.I. Joe stuff. And as I explain to people all the time, I see it on Twitter and I see like you're following in the people that you, you know, kind of uh, like hang out with in that G.I. Joe nerd verse there. Yeah, that's right. They love you. And, uh, you know, you're very. It's, it's a really good community. It's, you're big in that community. Yeah, right? it's it's a it, especially on Twitter. It's very positive where you don't you can post stuff and share stuff and you don't get like a million people saying, oh, I will claim that. And I will claim that. It's like, no, I'm just sharing what I got. I'm not yeah. I'm not right. on Twitter to sell stuff. Yeah. It's not Facebook, which can be like you post something a fine and they're like, well, how much do you want for that? It's like, hey, asshole, I bought that for myself. You know, and it's just, it's a great, you know, it's a positive community. There's a lot of great, um, you know, people there that are just sharing and playing and just doing their thing. And it's, and I'm thriving in it because I love it. You know, you do little segments where you talk about news and you might talk about the comics or whatever, but you end every episode talking about kind of like either a vehicle or a play set. Correct. Right. And uh, you, you do these fucking detailed, like. It really helps to do the detailed ones when they're based on a real item. Like my favorite episode is the vamp. Um, By the way, I, I just said that exact, like an exasperated tone. I didn't mean that as if like, oh, I meant like <laughs> I would never like you're so much better than me because like you really like have your you know what you're talking about. You really get into it. Yeah, um, that's what I'm into. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, you're up to episode 12. I'm listening to 12 right now. Yeah, I'm recording fact. 13 this weekend. All right. And uh, are you, are you, are you, you're every, like, you're two weeks? I'm, yes, I'm a bi weekly podcast. All right. And also, you can tell people if they want to see the video version. The video version is posted to the Chaplain Assistance Motor Pod YouTube channel. Or if you're already subscribed to the Pine Comics YouTube channel, it's also posted there. One day, John and I are going to discuss having sub channels on the Pine Comics channel just to make it streamlined. Pine Comics channel really took a hurt with, uh, with COVID. We haven't really done a lot of, we were getting really, like, good at the video content and then just, like, the world fell apart. And so I guess if that's all that happened. Well, then, I was doing a lot of the video content, but I just, I'd rather do an audio podcast than edit video. To yeah, be I, I'm, no, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. All right. So our guest has been John. John, shocking things. Tell everybody out there what it's about again. Uh, what episode you're up to now and give us some plans for the future. What's coming up? I think I know something about November, right? We're in November now. Yes. So it, it, you're going to have to go back and, and listen and listen for the rest of the month. But what do we got? But uh, basically it's, it was my wife, Laura's idea to do, cause we both like horror movies. So she said, well, when we start a horror park podcast and I said, okay, but well, then as time went on, I said, well, I like other things besides horror movies. I'd like to branch out, do more cult films. So have various things like uh, there's a wrestling movie called Grunt that came out. That's a cult film, uh, Highlander. So it's kind of branching out. And then, um, but like Evil Dead, we did that. Like basic, you know, standard horror films, Friday the 13th. Going to do more obscure ones too. Uh, but now we're in November and this is uh, Ninja November. Nice. It's just going to be all 80s ninja films for the entire month. I think I saw your current one coming out or just came it out. Just came out today, actually. Enter the Ninja. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, my friend Rick, uh, he does a podcast, PWZ. It's a wrestling podcast. We both have a lot of the same taste. So, if Laura, she can care less about martial arts films. So, Rick said, Oh, I love them. So, I'll talk uh, with you about them. Okay. I'm going to avoid that one for now because we've been doing the uh, SFA 80s uh, videos. And that was the next one planned. Mm -hmm. So we're going to record that one. And then I'm going to listen. I don't, I try not to, if I know someone's doing something similar on the same time, I try not to listen to it for the podcast. I'm afraid you I'm going to, exactly. I'm afraid yes, I'm going to yes, rip yes. off their yep. jokes. Yep. You know, I'm going to say the wrong thing, yep. but I'm looking forward to that. Cause I'm uh, the ninja, uh, for, what is that? Franco Nero, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I call him the uh, Italian Chuck Norris. The Italian Chuck Norris, <laughs> the original uh, Django from, uh, from the, a, yeah, from the original Django. Yeah. All right. So 
Shocking Things, and uh, where can everybody find you? Uh, easiest way is go to anchor.fm slash shocking things that has that's the hub that has all the social media links all the episodes too but it's also on you know apple google spotify and all the major platforms all right you're out there all right well tell laura thank you for letting you come here maybe, ne- <laughs> maybe next time she'll come over and yeah. we'll i'll get both hosts on okay uh i heard did you say that um we just did an episode on terrified and you said she didn't like that now did she no, no, had no, she, no, already she did seen like it, it. No, oh no. she did like it okay i i told them that you talked about it and uh, how you were getting scared watching oh, yeah. it. Uh, I'm a big pussy. <laughs> yeah. So I said, let's, let's, get, let's give it a shot. I always saw it on Shudder. And it's one of those things. I saw the artwork. I'm like, ah, the artwork's corny looking. It's not great. Yeah. So I, just for that reason, and it scared her when yeah. we were watching it. So. Oh, that thing, yeah. under the, that the whole bit with him videotaping the bed scene. Fuck that. Fuck oh, that. the little boy is what really freaked her out the most. The little boy was gross. Yes. Yeah. The little boy was gross for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, you know us. We're Pint of Comics on Instagram. We're Pint underscore uh, O underscore Comics. That's where we do most of our stuff now. We're still on Twitter, though, at Pint of Comics. Facebook, Pint of Comics. Gary, say the words. See ya. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off.